Texas is in the midst of one of the worst droughts in its history. Rivers and reservoirs are drying up, and wildfires have scorched thousands of water-starved acres throughout the state. Drought conditions have prompted many communities to step up efforts to secure future water resources and to protect what they have through conservation measures. In San Angelo, the community relies solely on surface water, and the lack of rain and record number of 100 plus degree days are dwindling the resource. That's why the city is developing the Hickory Aquifer Project, a groundwater source that is more drought resistant and will supply the city with water for at least 50 years. Our, our sources of water at this time are all surface water and so uh, our primary source is ivy. We, we get most of our water from ivy and have for quite some time. Secondary source would, primary would be uh, Twin Buttes and then uh, our last real resort is uh, Nasworthy. When we, when we start having to pull off from Nasworthy, the water is really getting, getting low. That's our last resort and, and um, we get down to less than a year of supply easily. Well, the primary effect we're seeing because of the drought, and it's a gradual effect, I mean, it's just not an all at once thing. As the water evaporates in our source water areas, uh, Lake Ivy, uh, Nasworthy, Twin Buttes, South Concho River, uh, as that water evaporates, the solids are still there that were there. And when you have less and less water, the concentration of the solids increases. So we see a gradual trend upwards of alkalinity, hardness, chlorides, sulfates, actually all the constituents that we normally have in our water. Well, drought one, basically all it changes is instead of being able to water two days per week, you're only allowed to water one day per week now. Still no watering between noon and six. You know, if you have to cycle and soak, you're allowed to do that. You know, you can water at five in the morning, come back at 10 in the morning and do that. Or, you know, five in the morning and eight at nine o'clock if you need to do that, something like that. But it's just the one day a week you're allowed to water. So as we look at the different situations, or as we compare the droughts of 03, 04 to what we're going through right now, one of the things that's really important to, to consider is that we have changed how we utilize the surface water that we have. Traditionally, we would utilize the water that we have in our lakes first and then utilize the ivy water. Uh, they have reversed that and we utilize our ivy allocation first. And so if you look at the lake levels now compared to where they were in the 0304 drought, we're actually in a better position and that's really gonna help us get through this. That in conjunction with the work that we're doing with the Water Master Program, um, is allowing us to, to move through this in a more balanced way and, and, and really it's not creating the serious situation that we could potentially have faced had we have utilized all of the water in our local lakes and we were you know, simply relying on the ivy water. This year in March we sent out drought warning letters, um, the earliest we've ever done it. Usually we don't send letters out until May. Um, we usually don't start curtailing or restricting water until June or July. This year we actually started restricting water in March. Um, drought conditions haven't improved and we have gotten to the point where our water that we do allow is very minimal. Uh, old, old priority dates, every permit has a priority date and the date on that permit states where you are in a line basically. If you're an old senior priority date, then you get a better chance of getting some water, especially this time of year. However, as, as the drought continues and the, the length that we've already established so far, um, majority of the water right holders in this area are not allowed to pull any water because we just don't have the inflows there to substantiate their uh, requests. Um, it's a lot on uh, supply and demand and you got more than more demand than what you're supplying you know you just don't have there's not there well the biggest thing during the summer months is your landscape so it's making sure that your sprinkler system is spraying on your landscape not in the streets the gutters the sidewalks things like that and that's going to require you getting out there turning it on watching each zone run for a few minutes to make sure everything is working properly uh, you may have a broken head a leak in a pipe even a bigger leak in the pipe itself you know, to look at and make sure everything is working well. I am not a proponent of creating a whole lot of stiff, right? When we're in drought conditions, you don't really have a choice. 
but beyond the drought conditions that we're currently in and what, what's implicating us in the future, in the near future, I would like to set up incentive programs to, to help incentivize people to do simple things, changing toilets out, uh, washing machines account for typically the number two item that is a water consumer inside the house. Toilets are typically number one. Doing, being smart landscaping, I mean, you know, things like that. If we could provide simple incentives for people to do those type things, rainwater collection, possibly reuse of some gray water within the house. You know, those are things that, that we can do, but, you know, add some incentives for people to, uh, where, where that can help people, you know, get encouraged and get excited about doing that type of thing. All water right holders have to call our office uh, before they turn on their pump. That's different from a non-water master area where it is on the honor system. You could have a section of river where several people are pulling at the same time. Well, with the water master program, you don't have that because they have to call in first, get permission to pump. We make sure that there is a sufficient flow there and that in that section, there's not too many people pulling out where it dries up. However, you know, again, with the drought situation, it's drying up, it's, the, the flows are just not there and, and we have to make sure that we don't stop the river, we don't have dry spots, if we can help it at all. Um, Mother Nature may take that over from us anyway, but that, that's part of the difference between a water master area and a non-water master area. Uh, we're the third one, the first one was in the Rio Grande and then um, South Texas covers about 50 counties and then us, we're a, a, a reach from the South Texas, the same, the South Texas Watermaster is also our boss um, and we're the newest one. And eventually I see that the state will probably do Watermasters all over because we're, we're in the field. We're, we're next to those water right holders and walking them through the process. If you're seeing a neighbor or some other house watering, the water's running down the street or they're watering between noon and six, give my office a call at 657-4506. Let me know, I need an address and what they're doing. If they're wasting water, if they're watering at three o'clock. And I do need an address. I'm getting a lot of calls so I can't run out there every minute and see what's going on. So I greatly appreciate your help with an address. Um, if it is new landscape, they do have a variance that they're allowed to do, but uh, you know, let me, I can make that determination. So just leave a message. Uh, I have a message machine that goes 24 seven, so you can leave it at any time, day or night, and I will get that and send out the appropriate violation notice. The, the city has to be a respectable neighbor just like everybody else. We need to treat people and act the same way that we're expecting everyone else to act. We need to be, in fact, in the forefront. We need to be the leader in how, that, how that's happening. And so that's something we've been asking, talking to, to Harold and company about, and, and it looks like that what they've done is they've cut back on, we're only watering Class A facilities at this point, and there's a lot of parks and areas that are getting no water at this time. My hope is that we can still water some of the trees to keep the trees viable, but I'll drive around and look at all the parks that are in my district, and there's not one, there's not one that is being watered and they're all just being let go. And so the city is trying to do its part and that's all we can ask. And then, and if people see things that don't look right and are not going on, they need to let us know because we want to be the leader in this community as far as water conservation and following the code, following the rules and doing everything the way we're supposed to. So we simply ask if you see something that's not right, that doesn't look right, if there's a sprinkler spraying in the street, tell us. You don't know what you don't know.